Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool and truck. Hi, I'm Kyle and we're back with another video from DIY Auto Homeschool. We're in the shop today working on a 2000 Chrysler Town & Country minivan with a 3.3 liter V6 and we're going to be replacing the water pump today. Um, you may notice I'm not in my normal stall. My normal stall is uh, occupied by a Dodge pickup whose heads are still at the machine shop right now. So we're in this stall, but we're going to get the vehicle lifted up and we're going to get rolling on this repair and I will catch up with you at that point. So here is the culprit. This is our water pump, uh, very easily accessible from the bottom side of the engine. We'll have to take this plastic cover off. There's uh, two fasteners over here at the front edge of it that are 10 millimeter heads, and then just some plastic trim retainers that we'll have to pull out. And then we should have pretty much open access to drain the cooling system and then remove the water pump and replace it with a new one. Usually these plastic fasteners that uh, we see right here and there's um, another one up there. Most of them you can just grab and pull off without breaking them. Uh, just know that if you do break them that you'll have to find some new fasteners to put in there. But these usually come apart pretty easy. Just watch your eyes, make sure it dust and that doesn't fall down in your eyes. Because that's never any fun. Okay, now we have full open access to the water pump from the bottom of the vehicle. And you'll notice here, we do have the lower radiator hose come into it, and we have a discharge hose right here. However, neither one of those are going to have to come off for this water pump replacement, because the way we'll go about this is we'll remove the serpentine belt, and then this pulley will unbolt with the three bolts right there. and then the water pump actually bolts to the front of this back housing and we'll just pull it off and it's got a gasket or an o-ring gasket that goes in there we'll clean it up and the new water pump will actually sit on the front of this housing so we won't ever have to take off this discharge hose or the lower radiator hose uh, to do this job but we will have to drain the cooling system because this is straight open access into the cooling system and to change up the order a little bit it's probably a better idea if you loosen up these bolts, uh, the three bolts that hold the water pump pulley on, prior to removing the serpentine belt. That way you have some tension on there to help keep this pulley from spinning while you're trying to break those loose. So let's get that done real quick and then we'll carry on with the job. Okay, as you can see here, we've got three 13 millimeter head bolts and since the serpentine belt's still on, as I said, we've got some resistance to turning. So we'll just give them a quick, a quick thrust on the wrench, and that should break them loose on some of them. It looks like it came. Yep. And last one. Oops. Well, now all three of these should be loose. That way when we pull this uh, serpentine belt off, we can just hold that pulley and spin those bolts out and we don't have to worry about trying to break them loose with no tension on there. All right, on this vehicle, the serpentine belt tensioner is also accessible from the bottom side of the vehicle and the fastener on the center of it, we're not actually going to loosen the fastener up, but we're going to use it to turn the tensioner to release pressure on the belt. 
Uh, it's a 15 millimeter wrench and you just get, reach it up there, grab it on the tensioner and when you pull on the tensioner, as you may be able to see here, the belt will fall loose. So just pull on the tensioner and find the easiest spot to pull the belt off and I think in this case it's actually going to be the water pump is going to be the easiest spot for me to remove the belt. So now our belt is free and we should be able to just let it hang hopefully mostly out of the way here and without having to reroute the entire thing uh, to put it back on because these belts can be a little bit of a pain to fully reroute and put on. And as I said, with that belt off, we can just hold the pulley still, and these bolts should now spin out by hand. Uh, the three bolts that hold the pulley onto the water pump. You will spend a whole bunch of time trying to get this done if you do not break these bolts loose while that belt is still on there. Uh, it's just not worth the extra effort. So, pulley's off, belts are off. Uh, typically, I'll set the bolts inside of the pulley and just set the pulley off to the side so that I know where the bolts for it are and I don't get confused on what bolts go where. Even though this is a simple job, it's a good habit to get into of making sure you know where all of your bolts go to. So now we, we got a pretty good view of the, of the water pump here. Let me see if I can zoom in and uh, get you a little better shot of it. It's got a couple spots it's leaking. Uh, leaking around the seal. Leaking out the front. I think uh, the weep hole also looks like it's leaking. So let's go ahead and get that off of there um, and we will see what it looks like. Okay so in the interest of saving a little bit of time I've actually decided that the way I'm going to go about draining the cooling system is going to be by loosening up these bolts and letting it kind of pop loose and just let it drain out right there. So I'm going to show you breaking the bolts loose, but then I'm going to uh, back the camera up a little bit just so it doesn't get splashed with the coolant when I start to let it out. Uh, these are 10 millimeter head bolts and really all you got to do is just kind of come in here and give it, give each of them like half to three quarters of a turn just to kind of loosen them up and I may actually start to get some coolant coming out anyway. Uh, this engine is still warm because it drove in here. Uh, so it will be under a little bit of pressure in the cooling system. That's one thing to be careful about every time you deal with the cooling system is to understand that it is a system that keeps the pressure uh, on most systems between about 15, 16 PSI, some a little higher, some a little lower. but I've got these bolts started turning. There is a total of one, two, three, four, five bolts that hold this water pump to the cover. So once you've done those bolts, you know you've got them all. But for right now, I'm gonna back the camera up a little bit and I will drain the cooling system by removing the water pump from the rear housing. Okay, so it's probably more wishful thinking than anything to actually already have the drain pan here. Uh, coolant never drains exactly how you'd like it to. So let's uh, get these loosened up and get this water pump off so we can get it cleaned up and get the new one on. Here comes the cow. Uh, since we've broken that loose, we're just going to let that drain for a little bit uh, and hopefully it will help keep us from getting covered in coolant when we go to finish taking it off. Okay, so now that pretty much all of the coolant has finished draining, uh, I'll go ahead and pull the last bolt out of the water pump and then I'll sit and explain to you what bad news we ran into along the way. Alright, and there it is. There's our leaking water pump. And uh, let's go talk about the horrible day that I'm about to have working on this vehicle. 
All right, so there it is. There is the open and uncovered water pump housing that our new water pump is going to seat against. And if I can show you here real quick, like, I will show you where the problem lies. Oop. Right here. This is what's left of one of the bolts that the last person to put a water pump in this decided would be okay to just run down cross-threaded. So it ran all the way down, but pulling it out, it got nice and snug, and I tried to work it back and forth a little, and uh, it eventually just broke the head of the bolt off. So that's something that we're going to have to deal with and fix. I'm probably not going to go into much detail in this video about the repair on that, uh, but I will make a video where we talk about uh, removing broken off bolts and how to deal with that. So I'm going to uh, deal with this and you will meet, meet back up with me on the other side of that repair. Okay, so that's done. I got the bolt that had broken off removed. Uh, yeah, the hole actually, I drilled it out and tapped it to a, a slightly larger size bolt. Uh, there was one other bolt that had also been cross-threaded, only it came out uh, as whole. Uh, the threads were still damaged though, so I ended up drilling out and tapping that hole as well just to make sure we avoided any issues going back together. Now we've got the mating surfaces cleaned up, we've got the holes ready to go back together, and we're going to take a look at our new water pump and get the bolts prepped and everything ready to go back in. So let's get underneath the car and take a look at it. All right, so here we are. We've got the mating surface for the water pump housing cleaned up. This was the bolt, uh, the hole where the, uh, the bolt was at. We got that bolt removed and uh, tapped for a slightly larger size bolt and this one up here had also been cross threaded so we went ahead and tapped that for uh, the same slightly larger size bolt um, these three didn't have any problem coming out so those are going to be using the original bolts but this half of it is completely ready so let's go take a look at and prep the water pump all right so this is our new water pump um, it looks just like the old one, uh, and I'm actually pretty sure that the old one had been replaced before uh, because of the fact that two of the bolts were cross-threaded. They typically don't do that from the factory. So uh, this being the replacement, uh, we've got the groove on the back of it here where the new seal, the O-ring, is going to sit, and this is the new O-ring. Now, uh, most even replacement part manufacturers will tell you to use a uh, a tacky gasket adhesion uh, or a gasket glue or gasket adhesive to uh, to hold it there in place while you place the water pump on the engine in some cases it's absolutely necessary to do it it's just a pain to try to do, not do it uh, typically I like to use um, the right stuff uh, I I've just had really good luck with it and on these I try not to use much at all I mean literally just enough to hold it in place on some of the paper gasket water pumps I will put a super super thin layer between the water pump and the gasket and the gasket and the housing that it's going to sit on um, and I mean a, a super super very thin layer but on these I'll use it but not much because all I want to do is hold this o-ring in place because this o-ring uh, is what seals it and it will seal it pretty well uh, I've had really good luck with the o-ring seals sometimes they're a pain to put on but they usually do pretty well uh, most of the issues that I've seen come from them are from incorrect installation but you will get a failure every now and then so let me get some of that we'll put it on here and then we'll get this water pump put back up on the engine all right I said uh, the right stuff is what I use Nothing in the world saying that you have to use it. You can buy it in a, uh, a Tube or you can you can buy it in a can you can buy it in a self uh, Dispensing tube or you can buy it like this uh, We use quite a bit of it here uh, just because of the volume of repairs that we do 
so we buy it like this because it's easier to have on hand. Now, as I said, I'm not going to put much on this at all, and I'll just show you here in a couple spots where I'll put it. All right, I've just got a couple light spots on the water pump around there, and that might actually be even a little more than I typically would put. Um, but the idea is that when I press this O-ring down into the, the surface, the, the groove that it sits in, the right stuff will start to tack up pretty quick because it does set up fairly quickly. Uh, and it will hold that o-ring perfectly in place so I can go and set this up on the engine. So let's go get this set up on the engine and uh, get the bolts tightened down and in place. All right, here we are back under the vehicle. We're going to get this water pump put back up in place. I've got all the bolts with me to, to start this. And I'm just going to take this and set it up in place right here where I know it goes. I know this bolt hole and that line up, so I will then, oops, I dropped that one, so we'll just do all the other bolts real quick. And let me grab that other one I dropped, way up here at top, we'll get it started. Now, since I have changed bolt sizes on two of these, uh, two of them are going to be a different size uh, fastener. They should be a 7 16th. Now, you don't want these bolts to come out, but you do want them snug. Um, honestly, it takes a little bit of time to get a feel for how tight certain bolts should be. You don't want to tighten them so much you break them uh, or else You'd be back in the same mess that I was in trying to repair the bolt holes or extract a broken bolt. And that is a mess you don't want to get into. Uh, you just want them kind of tight. You can look up what the torque specification is for these, but you'll kind of know. You'll, you'll feel it get to where it doesn't really move too easily. It'll, it'll be tight. All right, let me switch sockets out and we'll get that other one. Or those other two. All right. And 7 sixteenths it is. As you should remember, uh, because it was not that long ago for you, it was a little while ago for me, but uh, these are 13 millimeter fasteners and they just take a second to, to get lined up. Once you get one lined up, it should be pretty easy. And we're gonna do the exact same thing, but kind of the opposite thing that we did last time. Is we're gonna take these things and we're gonna run them down by hand, but we're not going to tighten them down until we put the serpentine belt back on. That way, for the same reason, we have a little bit of tension on it and we can get a, uh, uh, get a little more torque put on it and not risk having these things come loose. Okay, so now let's get the serpentine belt on. Make sure it's run in the spots that it's supposed to be. Underneath this idler up here, over the AC compressor, uh, around the tensioner, and then make sure it stays over the water pump or we can go under the crank first. Uh, the whole idea is to run it over all but one item and then move the tensioner and push that last item into place. So let's see if we can get that done. I think we're gonna have to readjust here for a second. Show you a little trick. 
whenever you have trouble getting the grip and the leverage you need on uh, something that you're using a wrench on, get that wrench on there as, as best you can and um, take the next size larger um, the next size larger wrench, in this case it's a 16, and hook it over the end. Watch me not be able to get this one hooked now. But hook it over the end and use it as extra leverage. So it's a whole lot easier for me to pull that tensioner down now with uh, another wrench length of leverage on there. And I will just pull it down and fight this belt to get it to stay in place where it needs to be, apparently. And it doesn't hurt to just kind of pull on it again to double check that you got it in all the grooves you're supposed to have it in. And in this case, I do not. I gotta get it in the grooves on the AC compressor. There we go. It's a whole lot better. Under the crank, over the water pump, uh, around the AC compressor under the idler goes over the top of the alternator then directly around the back side of the power steering pump up over the idler and we're back at the crank where we started. So now that the belt's on there, let's double check these uh, bolts on the water pump to make sure that pulley is going to stay on there and not have any issues with wanting to come off. All right. Okay, since we did not disconnect the lower radiator hose and we didn't disconnect this uh, discharge hose here, um, we, don't have to, uh, we don't have to worry about putting any of that back together since we drained the cooling system by just popping the front off of the, uh, of the water pump. Now, as you may notice, I am missing an oil filter and I have an electrical connector not plugged in. Uh, that was all part of me having a fun day trying to drill out the hole uh, for that one bolt that broke off. Uh, but I'm going to get an oil filter, slap it on here, and then we're going to lower the vehicle down and we're going to fill the cooling system. And we're going to call this repair finished. Okay, and last but not least, uh, we cannot forget to reinstall this plastic cover here so that we just have everything we took off back in place. Uh, yes, there are a number of people who would just leave this off, uh, but we're not going to. We're going to be doing these repairs correctly and professionally, so we will make sure that what we take off goes back on. Those are the retainers. We'll put these fasteners back in. Uh, just line up the holes. Okay, the important thing to remember when we're filling up a cooling system that we've emptied is we are not just going to fill up the reservoir and ship it because that will do nothing but cause a whole lot of problems. We open the radiator and we will fill, fill it at the radiator. And it will take a little bit of time to fill it and let it settle and fill it and let it settle. But that is how we do it. We got it up to the top a little bit. It'll settle down pretty quick. And after we get it filled up here and we can't add any more, we're going to go ahead and start the engine and we're going to run it a little while and we're going to let this fluid level drop. We'll keep topping this up uh, with, the, with the blower on and the heater on high so that it is running coolant through the heater core and it is uh, circulating coolant through the entire system work out any of the little air bubbles so we're going to start it up we're going to run it with the heater on high 
and we're going to let this drop and keep filling it up until it drops until uh, we no longer can add any more. It stops dropping. It'll actually start rising a little bit as the coolant gets hot and expands. And then we will, uh, at that point, the, the thermostat should have opened, worked any residual air bubbles out of the cooling system, and uh, we should be about finished with the repair. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so what we'll do now that we've got it most fully, mostly fully bled, uh, we'll close the radiator off and we'll go to the reservoir and we will fill it up just a little more than it is supposed to be, a little higher, and I will explain why in one second. Okay, so basically um, the cooling system for the most part is a sealed system except not really. Uh, the, the radiator cap will keep the system sealed, but since it's heating up, it's obviously expanding, and the pressure inside that system is going to rise. Now, to keep the pressure from just going up and up and up and up, uh, what the cap does is that about uh, between 14 and 16 PSI, a little bit lower, a little bit higher on some vehicles, um, it will actually open and allow coolant to leave the system uh, into a hose that goes direct, directly into the coolant reservoir. So it's kind of like uh, it's overflow. And then once you shut it off, as the system cools down, it actually goes into a vacuum and it will draw coolant from the reservoir back into the cooling system to keep it completely filled. And that's what we're, we're just gonna let it do that is we got it almost fully bled, but if there's any little pockets of air, they'll just work themselves out and it'll fill itself back up with the, the coolant that's in the reservoir. So at this point, all that's left is a test drive of the vehicle to verify proper operation of the cooling system. But with the time it's run so far and the high idle that I was giving it there for a little while, uh, the thermostat's already opened. It's regulating its temperature just fine. So it, the, the test drive is more just going to be of a double check, which uh, for the most part is what a test drive should be on repairs like this. And if you're doing work for other people, you really do need to do a test drive. Uh, I know it, it cuts into your time and it cuts into the labor time and you want to just get on to the next vehicle, but it doesn't help you and it doesn't help your customer if you don't do a test drive and you send it out and they get five miles down the road and they have another problem or the same problem and they turn around and they come right back. It makes you look bad, it makes the shop look bad, and it lowers their confidence in you. It's a very small thing that you can do just to make sure that the repair is done, it's done right, and you have that level of confidence talking to the customer saying, yes, I, I went out after the repair, I drove it, I verified that everything's working just the way it should, and you know, there's going to be issues uh, anytime you work on vehicles, things are going to happen, but you just have that little bit of assurance that, yeah, I know that what I fixed is fixed and it's working fine right now. Uh, so, uh, that being said, uh, this repair is pretty much in the books. Um, we'll see you on our next video, hopefully here in about two days. I'll have a video up and uh, until then, have fun and I will see you back here for more learning.